Welcome back. In keeping with our theme of all different cool things that are being developed around COVID and how do we get back to work and how do we handle things the way they are now and how are some businesses pivoting to handle all of these issues, we are grateful to be able to introduce to you Robert Tursick, the CEO of Direct Education Worldwide, and he's going to talk to us about something called COVID Smart. And I think we all are going to want to be COVID smart. Welcome, Robert. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks, Lauren. And hi, Amy. I'm happy to be here. Uh, hello. I'm so happy to learn more about what you're doing to help us like, keep safe and reopen safely. And um, I guess, uh, would you just give us a little background about what sure. you're offering us? Yeah. Sure thing. So COVID Smart is a training program and it teaches you the best practices to prevent getting the disease. And so, you know, of course, right now we hear a lot about uh, vaccines and treatments for COVID-19. But the fact is there is no vaccine right now that we know works. Uh, they're testing many different things, of course, um, but it'll probably take a year or more before there's a, an effective vaccine at scale for the United States and for other countries. So that means we all have to learn to live with this disease for some period of time and it might be more than a year. And so I decided it would be great to create an online learning tool that teaches people the very best ways to prevent themselves from spreading the disease or getting sick themselves. So how exactly, um, how is this working? How is it rolling out? How, how does it become meaningful to us on our day-to-day -day basis? We decided to focus on businesses. And I'll tell you the reason we did that, Lauren, is that um, I noticed here in Los Angeles when the first lockdown happened in the middle of March, quite a few local businesses suffered. Um, and they suffered in a lot of different ways, mostly because when you're closed for a couple months, imagine a restaurant, those companies don't have a huge amount of cash flow. And so they start running out of cash. And now what's happened is a, a, quite a few stores have closed forever. If we want to have a, a thriving local economy, and this is true everywhere, not just LA, this is true across the country. If you want to have a thriving local economy, you've got to bring the workers back and you've got to reopen. But we want to do that safely. You know, there's a lot of pressure to reopen the economy. I understand that and I support that. But if we just reopen the economy without training people the best practices, then what we're gonna really do is just get a lot more people sick and that creates a bigger problem and then bigger lockdowns later. So to break that cycle, the right way we think to reopen is to teach people the best practices before they come back to work. And then when they arrive, they already know what to do. And for the employer, there's a lot of benefits here as well. It's not just about keeping workers healthy and safe. It's also about preventing another shutdown or an outbreak or something that would disrupt their business. So there's benefits both ways. Well, and the program is- yeah, I love the way you're approaching it because so many times we hear it, it as an either or. Yeah. Either we get a vaccine or we don't open or we yeah. do open and we just have to have everybody get it like with the herd, the herd mentality, right? And yeah, the way you're doing it is a really nice middle of the road strategy where we're like, listen, we have to learn how to live with this and we need to learn how to do it safely. And so I really think that's, a, that's the smart, right way to do it. And, and the fact is, there are ways to deal with this. So I'll tell you, we didn't come up with the program ourselves. We developed it in, in partnership with a group called APIC, A-P-I-C. It's the Association of Professionals in Infection Control. It's the largest group of epidemiologists in the world, 15,000 epidemiologists all over the world. Every hospital and clinic in the United States has an APIC member on their staff. Their job is to prevent disease inside of the hospitals. And you probably have heard about sometimes that, you know, people get an infection in a hospital. Yeah. The epidemiologist's job is to pre prevent that from happening. So we reached out to them and we said, hey, we want to teach people the same skills, but just for regular working people, not inside a clinic or a hospital, people in a factory or an office or shopping center or a school. And they said, we, they were very enthusiastic. They were super responsive because for a long time, they've had the goal of trying to popularize these best practices. And they're easy to teach, they're easy to learn. So we worked with them to develop a program that takes less than an hour. And it will teach you the fundamental things that you need to do. And if you do all these things, you're gonna greatly reduce the risk of an infection for yourself or for anyone else. The program's called COVID Smart and it's online at gotoworksmart.com, go to work smart. So what are some of these tips that you can tell us Oh, I can tell you all about it. It's because uh, it's really quite interesting. I mean, everybody thinks they know how to wash their hands and they know how to do social. Well, yeah, distancing. exactly. That's all I would know how to do. I'm like, okay, wash my hands for 20 seconds. Sing happy birthday <laughs> twice. Okay, well, you guys are on it. That's very good. Most people so don't Lauren, know. Woo! <laughs> right? We have kids at home. <laughs> right, right. That's right. That's right. You know, the fact is most people were taught to wash their hands when they were little kids by their parents. And it's not like we have, you know, a checkup later on to make sure you're still doing it right. 
So if you ever notice, like I notice sometimes when I'm in a shopping center, I'll notice people who are supposed to wash their hands and they just kind of rinse their hands off and they're done, right? And that's not really doing the job. And so what we've developed is, uh, is actually a, a program and signage that you can display in public and it teaches you exactly the steps. These are the nine steps that are recommended by the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention. And these nine steps will teach you exactly how to clean your hands in such a way that you'll remove any trace of that virus. And that means that your hands are not clean. That's, that's one of the primary ways people do transmit the disease is through their hands. You know what happens is someone will sneeze or cough and then little particles fall down with gravity and they touch the surfaces. And so you can get secondary contact with the uh, disease that way. And we want to try to help people uh, prevent that. So that's one of the things is the that's nine That's a steps. really good one. You know, my son came out of the bathroom. We went to the mall when it was still open. It was right when it started. And he came out of the bathroom and he was just laughing. And I'm like, what are you laughing at about? And he goes, I just watched a guy with a mask walk out of the bathroom and not wash his hands. Like, who does that? <laughs> and for some reason, did it connect, right? So. I'll give you another example of the kinds of things we teach. Uh, we train people how to put their masks on properly. And now this thank is really important. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes. Yeah, so, how do you do this? That well, just you know, makes like, me crazy. If, if you think about like March um, and, and even the beginning of April, a lot of stores weren't giving masks out to their workers. And of course, there was a little bit of confusion there in the beginning because people weren't sure if masks were necessary. But then gradually, medical science caught up and they said, yeah, it's important to do it. So then all of a sudden, businesses started handing out masks to their workers. But what they didn't do is they didn't teach them how to use the mask. And so this is a d disaster. And if you go to the grocery store today, just, just look around the grocery store, you'll see a bunch of people with the mask down here or down here or worse, down here. Mm -hmm. it, you're, you're not doing anything. If you're, it's like it's security theater. And so, again, we've developed a program that teaches you how security to do this stuff. <laughs> um, so there's, like, there's these six steps to wearing your mask properly. And I'll tell you a really important tip for your viewers. So here's an example. A lot of people, when you say, here's, here's a mask, put the mask on or take the mask off, they touch the front of the mask. It's quite natural, right? Because the thing's sitting right there. Yeah. The problem is the minute you touch the front of your mask, that's where all the contamination is. So you just contaminated your hand. Mm. And then if you touch your eye, guess what? You put it in your eye. Or worse, people touch the front of the mask, then they put their hand inside the mask and you've ruined the mask. You got to throw it away. You can't use that mask. Now, no one even pays attention to this that's because great. they're not being trained properly. So the only way to put on and take off a mask properly is to touch those straps behind your ears. That's the only part you should touch. Mm -hmm. The front of the mask is what you're breathing. All the contaminations on the front, don't touch the front of the mask and never put your hands on the inside of the mask. Okay, I'm gonna reveal something I probably should not, but <laughs> what, okay, this is what I do. I have a whole bag in my purse of masks. Yeah. And when my kids, when we're ready to go in a store, I hand them out, however, Am I cross-contaminating my children? <laughs> is it, how long does it stay on? Like, how long do the contaminants stay on? It's a really good question. So the science changes a little bit here. As, they, as you know, the scientists are constantly studying this and learning yeah. new things about how long it can persist. So what we're concerned about is that an actual virus, a viable virus, is going to be on the inside of that mask or something. That's a concern. There's also viral particles, and it's not entirely clear what role they play in the transmission. You know, so sometimes it's just a piece of the virus. Can you get sick from that? We're not 100% sure. So this is all stuff that's being researched. And you may have heard, you know, conflicting things about that. What I've been told is that the best way to proceed is if you go out every single day, you should have five different masks. And mm -hmm. you should have five brown bags and it should be, you know, one, two, three, four, five on the bags. And so you wear mask number one, you put it on, you wear that for that day and you take that mask off, put it in bag number one. And the next day you take mask number two. And now you've got a full week between the time. And by that oh. point, then those masks should be okay to use again. So now, every five days you can feel pretty confident that anything is going to be, that's super interesting. I, I think that's the right way to do it. Mm -hmm. The things you want to try to avoid doing are, um, if you're wearing the same mask over and over again, it's better to have something washable, like a face covering that you could throw on the washing machine. That's probably a better, better way to proceed. Some of the masks, like those KN95 type masks with the anti-static uh, on them, you can't really wash those. They, they aren't effective after that. So what really matters is that you pay close attention to the kind of mask that you're wearing and you do the right thing for that. Now in our program, we go into detail on each one of those things. So if you go to um, go to worksmart.com, you can see our program and you can take it and they'll, they'll teach you, there's a whole section on masks and different types and how to take the, how to use those and how wow. to put them on. I can ask you like 10 million different questions about masks, but like just because we only have a limited time, could you give us just an overview of other things that it covers and maybe, you know, sure, sure. kind of whet so, our appetite to go onto the site? 
Yeah, so, so COVID Smart Training was developed specifically for workers, but it's applicable for everybody. So if you were to watch the program at home, you could do it with your kids and everybody would learn those skills. And in fact, that's by design. You can use it on a smartphone or a tablet or any kind of computer. You can access the course. And the course covers everything you need to know. So it's just, we designed it to be as short as possible, but to cover, to be comprehensive. And so it starts out with virus basics. What is a virus and how are viruses transmitted? A lot of people don't know this. I'll give you an example. A lot of folks think you can use an antibiotic to stop this. An antibiotic won't work with COVID-19. An antibiotic is only for a bacteriological infection. So it will not affect the virus at all. But a lot of, a lot of folks don't know that. Um, ammonia won't do anything for this as well. So you have to be careful about what things you're using to sanitize. So we start out with the basic, what's a virus, how is it transmitted? And then of course, we talk about how you can stop it from being transmitted. And then there are several specific skills. And those include things like the proper taking on, putting on and taking off of a mask, uh, the proper way to wash your hands. Of course, those are very important. Social distancing, you know, we hear about that maintain six feet all the time. But then the question is, how do you do that at work? How do you do a business meeting? How do you do a lunch meeting? How do you, we go into the detail about exactly how to do that in the context of a business so that people are equipped to do it safely. You can return to work safely. We also cover things like how to clean and disinfect the surface and how to do many normal things that you would expect to do in a business setting, but now do them more safely under the circumstances. Mm, that is so interesting. Yeah, and it's really cool. Really and it's really cool. fast. I mean, if you think about it, we're asking folks to give an hour of their time or less but they're gonna learn skills that can help them and their family avoid the sickness. And I should point out, that this is a really bad disease. I know several people who have had it. Some of them were sick for more than 70 days. Yeah. And of course, if you're one of the unfortunate people who goes to the hospital, well, that's a very grim scenario because even people who survive, they come back with some long lasting disorders, maybe a lifelong disorders. So the, the best approach here right now is to avoid getting it in the first place. And that's what we're teaching, prevention. There's no really good medical treatment that will help you right now. So it's really up to you to prevent getting this disease. Otherwise, it's going to be up to you and your immune system to fend off the disease if you get it. But I really love that you've created something that's bite size and yeah. it can be used in so many ways. I can totally see Amy sitting with her family and yeah. going through the program together. Not that it's just a bonding experience, but then you start to practice it together the same way it could be a bonding experience in an office environment or yes. in a restaurant environment where well, everyone gets behind it and they understand. That's exactly it, Lauren, you're so right. So that's exactly it. You know, what we have right now in the United States is a little bit of dissonance, different people with different views. Hey, that's the wonder of the United States and free speech. People have different views and they can express them. Mm -hmm. The problem is it's really hard for us all to settle on a common set of behaviors. What's the right thing to do? Now, the reason we focused on businesses is that they actually own that problem, right? Right now, they have a problem. You may have 10 employees at a small business, and I guarantee if you have 10 Americans together, two of them aren't going to want to wear a mask, right? It's just right. the way we are as people. So for a business owner, it's really important for them to set a policy and teach people the policy, and this is what we're going to do. Here's our conduct inside of our store. You have to follow these rules, or inside of our business, you have to follow these rules. There's a second benefit, though, too. When a company does the, the training and everybody in the company completes the training, we issue certificates to them and these certificates can be displayed in the window. And that's a great way to let consumers know that the business owner has taken every possible precaution to train their employees in the safe practices. And you'll notice that big green check mark. That big green check mark is easy to see from a distance, you know, from the car, from parking lot. So it, it attracts you to the story. Like, oh, those guys have done COVID smart training. But in addition, you can see a little QR code that can be scanned by a smartphone. That little QR code is, brings up a live digital certificate on your smartphone. And so you can see how many people in that building have taken the course, how many people passed, when the, issue, when the certificate was issued and how long it's valid for. And so that confers a great sense of security. I guess we can say it's an unambiguous assurance to the public that the person that owns this business is serious about preventing disease and they welcome you in their shop. You can imagine the future, you might be walking past some stores that have signs like this, COVID smart training was done by this store. And then you might see some other shops that don't have that. And you might think twice about entering those other shops. So this gives people better reassurance uh, that the business owner takes it seriously. And then, of course, we also give them signs that gently remind the public to do things like wear a mask. You've probably noticed uh, if you talk to shop clerks, you'll notice that some of them are scared of their customers. I think this is quite sad. Mm -hmm. They're worried because some customers don't want to wear a mask or they don't wear the mask properly or they don't know where they've been or what their practices are at home. And those poor workers are stuck inside of that box all day long and they're exposed to whoever comes in. And so we wanted to arm them or equip them with just a gentle reminder that says, hey, look, if you're going to come in our store, this is the way we do it here and we respectfully ask that you wear a mask. 
So it's a gentle way then for us to set a common set of baseline behaviors. And we think this is kind of what's missing in American rhetoric right now. American politics is very divided. We've all been socially isolated for a long time. So we've been very divided as a people. And we're hoping that we can get people to come together as a group, as a community and say, okay, the minimum that we can all do together is to wear a mask properly, to wash our hands properly, to cover our faces when we sneeze or cough properly, to make sure that we clean surfaces properly. And if we can all agree on that baseline stuff, watch, the infection rate will go right back down where we want it to go. This is what we need to do as a people. So we're really trying to encourage communities to adopt it. And I'm happy to tell you that we're now talking to 20 different cities in California, and now cities from other states have reached out to us because they want to do city-scale implementations with all the businesses and the schools and also the government workers so that we get every adult in the town trained on these services. That's amazing. And I hate to say it, but it feels like this is the good housekeeping seal of approval for our time is we're going to be looking for this insignia and we're going to want to know that that whatever businesses we're doing uh, business with or actually almost anyone we interact with has actually been educated around all of these important points. That's so exactly thank it. thank you. Thank you. When for a business this. owner displays this, what they're really making is a commitment to the public, right? They're saying that we're committed to your health and your safety and we're doing everything we can to manage this and we encourage you to do the same. So if you think of it like that, it's a little bit like we're reestablishing the social contract. And unfortunately, in United States politics is so polarized right now, people have become kind of impolite to each other. Mm-hmm. And this disease doesn't help us anymore because it causes us to be isolated. Mm-hmm. We want to try to get people to come back together and agree on a common standard of behavior. That's the whole point behind COVID smart training. So for individuals and for businesses, they can all go to, uh, is it go to worksmart.com? <laughs> Yeah, go to work smart. I'm, I'm As opposed saying. to, you know, <laughs> instead of just going to work, we're trying to get people to go to work smart. Go to work smart. Go do COVID smart training. Robert, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for sharing this great thank information. You so thank you. And we'll be right back.